Today's movie is a special request from Patreon supporter Abra Naber, who asked that I review the 1980s martial arts action movie Nine Deaths of the Ninja. And Abra, I want to take a minute to personally thank you for choosing this movie. You could have picked a really well-known bad movie for me to review, like The Room or Troll 2, but no, you went with a real B-movie deep cut with this one. Because believe me when I say, when it comes to hilariously bad cinema, this one is right up there, and I cannot believe I didn't know about it until now. And for that, you have my gratitude. So take me high, lead me to every twist and turn. So take me high, I won't stop till each step I learn. Nine Deaths of the Ninja is a 1985 martial arts action movie starring 80s action hero Sho Kasugi who also starred in Enter the Ninja, Revenge of the Ninja, and other movies with the word ninja in them. Plus, he was in The Godfather Part 2. So with so many ninja movies on his resume, what makes Nine Deaths of the Ninja so special? Well, you're about to find out. So right away, the movie wastes no time getting us straight to the action. Okay, did they just include footage of the actors waiting in between takes? Sit tight, man. I'm sure the plot will get started eventually. Actually, this might just be how they act all the time, since none of the other guys notice this smoke bomb going off. Looks like these are our heroes for the movie, and damn it, guys, this is no time to play your Tiger Electronic games. Show plays Spike Shinobi, who is, you guessed it, a ninja. Now, being a ninja, I'm sure he's gonna take out these guys using subtlety and stealth. Or just blow them the fuck up. That works too. They're helped by the fact that these are some of the most inept bad guys ever. Dude, your gun is not a sword. Just fucking shoot him. And if you need more proof of how incompetent these guys are, an explosion occurs right behind this guy, and his reaction is, hmm, must have been the wind. Huh? What? Hang on a second, what the hell's going on here? Wait, you mean this entire opening was just a training exercise? Okay, so I guess all those explosive rounds this guy was shooting were just blanks then. Gentlemen, you have just observed a combat exercise conducted by one of the world's best anti-terrorist teams. Yeah, or two rejected G.I. Joe characters. Anyway, let's get introduced to our heroes. From Japan, Spike Shinobi. His U.S. counterpart, Captain Steve Gordon. In charge of communications and control, Lieutenant Jennifer Barnes. She may not have done anything in the previous action scene, but come on, we had to fit a hot blonde in here somewhere. Okay, so that intro is pretty ridiculous. Where does it go from here? Don't know how or why this whole thing started. Is it worth a drive from one outsmarted? I've been here before, but the feeling's new. With the same smiles I wore. Well, here's your opening credit sequence, people. You know, most movies I do on this show take a little while before they get to a real what the fuck moment, but this one did it in six minutes. Who the hell thought of this intro? If you were flipping channels and saw this, would you ever guess it was from an action movie? And just listen to this song. So take me high, lead me to every twist and turn. So take me high, I want... Yeah, because nothing gets you ready for some kick-ass martial arts action like something you can slow dance to at a wedding. So after the Ninja Robert Palmer video is over, we cut to the American Embassy in Manila and a bus that I assume is going to a bad 80s hair convention. Also, Manila's got the most kick-ass white castle I've ever seen! Oh wait, never mind, I guess it's a normal one. But at least this place gives this guy a fortune cookie message with his meal. Anyway, how's the tour going? We will view Volcano Island, which is in the middle of Lake Ta'al. It was once the home of 140 families. That is, of course, until the volcano killed them all. Before that, though, they make a stop over at the, uh, Dr. Strangelove wedding? Also, just because it's a shotgun wedding doesn't mean you literally have to bring firearms. Looks like our villains for the movie have arrived, so who are they? I am Colonel Honey Hump. Honey Hump. 
All right, well, there's one of our main villains. Somebody with the name of a rejected Bond girl and hair that would make Bob Ross jealous. The Ambassador's not going to be happy to hear about this hijacking, mainly because it interrupts him from looking at his secretary's ass. Meanwhile, it looks like our heroes are busy living the Dick Cannon life, but let's be honest, there's only one Dick Cannon. Besides, I think Show's busy having a flashback to a different movie. Boy, I thought the fight scenes in this movie would look a little more convincing than this. This is what happens when you get your stunt doubles from the produce section. Listen, Show, I know you're angry your part was cut from Miami Connection, but can we get back to the movie, please? The group gets called to rescue the hostages, but first Show's got to do more ninja training. Okay, that may have looked cute, but all I can think of is how many horrifying bloopers of that scene exist. Looks like we're back with our villains. You know, I always wondered what it would look like if Thomas Dolby was in Monkey Shines. This is the mastermind behind the hijacking, Albie the Cruel. Because I guess Albie the Gimp was too tasteless even for this movie. Albie's played by Blackie Dammit, who's the father of Red Hot Chili Peppers frontman Anthony Kiedis. I don't have anything to add, I just knew I'd get comments if I didn't mention that. Anyway, Albie demands to see one of the hostages. We're gonna make a star out of you. Yeah, this movie is not making a star out of anybody. Albie demands the release of the guy we saw at the beginning, Mohammed Raji. And if you thought Honey Hump was ridiculous, just wait till you get a load of this performance. As you can see, the passengers are unharmed. All American drug enforcement personnel will be withdrawn from the Southeast Asia. You failed to comply with these demands. All hostages will be executed! I'll make you a deal. We'll give in to your demands as soon as you tell us what the hell accent that's supposed to be. As if this guy wasn't bad enough, the live-action version of Bayou Billy is a lot rapier than I thought he would be. And if you thought the tone of this movie was inconsistent before... <laughs> uh, enter the Dragon, Home Alone, same thing. I don't know why these villains are so hard to find. Just check the return address and the package they sent you. Oh, what's in the box? Oh. So, you can see what we're dealing with. A shitty movie? Anyway, tell us more about our villains. Albert Brandt, German national. Known by Interpol as Alby the Cruel. German, huh? Well, I guess it wouldn't be a ninja movie without a creepy German guy. Having been briefed on their mission, our heroes waste no time going after the villains and... visit an art gallery? Nine Deaths of the Ninja! Thrilling art gallery action! I don't know why I'm surprised. The movie opened with an interpretive dance scene. Why not have him look at art? Next, Spike's gonna show off his awesome ninja slam poetry skills. But something tells me Asian Pat Benatar here might be up to no good. Hey, come on, show. Quit stalling. Hit her with your best shot. Could this scene get any more ridiculous? I really need to shut my fucking mouth. Look, even Sho's wondering what the fuck is going on. And I guess his ninja training didn't prepare him for nut shots. Maybe he should try fighting something tougher than watermelons. And what do you know, Sho easily defeats them. They still put up a better fight than this guy, who just cuts out the middleman and defeats himself. There's no way he could have survived that. That had to have been at least a ten foot fall. They said earlier the villains are drug runners, yet they still have to steal other people's drugs. What do we got here? Yellow jackets! Boy, we got some heavy stuff here. This is what they use to write the script. How entertaining! I've never seen such a pitiful group of hostages before! Yeah, well, I've never seen a lamer group of villains before. And I've seen these guys! The hostages may be in trouble, but thankfully they've got the world's greatest anti-terrorist team looking for them. Oh, I don't know about you two, but this jet lag has finally caught up with me. I think I'm going to take a hot bath and uh, go to bed. Sure, the hostages are in danger and the clock is ticking, but screw that, I'm sleepy. Actually, on second thought, maybe she should get some sleep. The coroner reported needle scabs on Branham's legs. 
Evidently, uh, Albie kept him supplied and it's going to exchange for inside information. Uh, I kind of tripped over my line a bit. Should I do it again? Don't worry. With Blackie in this movie, nobody will notice. Nine, nine! Don't you dare touch fun hair and sweet little body! You will address me as Mr. Brunt! See? You've already forgotten about the line flub, haven't you? It's only a matter of time before the authorities located this camp. Well, I think it'll be a long time since our crack team mostly seems to be either standing around doing nothing or trying to get laid. Are these guys on a mission or on vacation? To a long and exciting friendship. That remains to be seen. A lot remains to be seen. He's talking about your tits. Steve gets cock-blocked by some thugs, but thankfully shows there to help him disguised as an old man. Why is he disguised as an old man? Fuck if I know, it's not like this gives him the element of surprise or anything. Maybe it's because it looks like my grandpa did all the fight choreography. How did you know that hit us? I saw these guys at the hotel. Nice disguise, huh? Yeah, and it would have been even better if it actually served any kind of purpose. This movie better start making more sense. <laughs> Okay, is the movie deliberately fucking with me now? And scene. Wow, I see our crack anti-terror team is working as hard as ever to find those hostages. Oh, and did somebody say witty banter? I see you're still playing with your balls. Ha <laughs> ha, get it? Because it's like testicles. Um, LB has issued an execution order. He wants the dark team eliminated. This guy doesn't waste any time. Yeah, unlike you guys. The time's up to release Raji, so good job chasing Tail instead of trying to find the hostages, fellas. And if you're wondering what Raji's like, I think I can sum him up like this. <laughs> yep, even the characters are laughing at this movie. Raji kills the cab driver taking him from prison because, um, evil? And they must not have allowed any conjugal visits since the first place he goes is a brothel. Thankfully, shows hot on his trail, cleverly disguised as a man visiting a brothel. I want a clean girl. No clap. Are you kidding? My girls are sterilized, sanitized, and lobotomized. Are you describing your girls or the filmmakers? This is the part where Sho fights the smoke monster from Lost. What? Makes about as much sense as some of the other fight scenes in this movie. And are these guys even working for the villains? I'm starting to think everyone in Manila just wants to kick Sho's ass for some reason. Raji gets away, but Sho tries to pursue him in a helicopter, only to immediately get captured. Hey, no fair, the watermelons never snuck up on him like that. Not that it really matters, since these villains apparently don't have any peripheral vision. And if Raji thinks he's the most ridiculous villain in this movie, he is sorely mistaken. Excellent, Raji! For you, I have arranged rest and rehabilitation aboard Madame Whoopi's floating boat palace! You do realize there's a difference between a German accent and sounding like you just learned how to read your lines, right? Sho tries escaping using the Mo Howard technique, but when that doesn't work, he tries the deadly high five finger death punch. Oh, and he lets Raji get away because once again, he's part of the world's greatest anti-terrorism team. Oh, looks like Blackie got his paycheck for the movie. But never mind that, these two need to cruise for more chicks. Nice welcoming committee, wouldn't you say? What does this have to do with finding the hostages? And when did this movie turn into the best little whorehouse in the Philippines? This Nazi keeps sending me these goons to entertain. If he didn't pay so well, I'd blow his scrawny ass back to Berlin. Hmm, so she doesn't like Nazis, but she's more than willing to take their money. She's kind of like the Swiss bank of whorehouse madams. Hey, thanks, movie. I always wanted to see Shokasugi in a nut hugger. Sho finds out where the bad guy's camp is from the ship's bartender, because why wouldn't he know that? He then escapes after using the Vulcan nerve pinch. Hey, look, there's something you wouldn't see in a James Bond movie. Although, Sho is definitely no Daniel Craig. And is Steve ever going to actually fight somebody in this movie? It seems like Sho does all the work and Steve gets all the women. Even Jennifer manages to take out a bad guy. You die. Not likely. Did her gun just throw up on him? Save your strength, scumbag. 
It would take a tougher man than you to pull apart industrial epoxy. Okay, you guys missed a perfect opportunity to one-up Raiders of the Lost Ark here. I mean, how awesome would it have been if the scene went like this? Not likely. Anyway, Spike and Steve find the enemy camp and immediately blow it up. Oh, well, okay, that was easy. I think they really just wanted to blow up the scenery before these two could eat it. Honey instructs their henchmen to kill the heroes, which I thought they were trying to do anyway, but this time they get an incentive. Anybody brings me back a pig head gets one of my girls for half an hour. Huh? Yeah, looking at these guys, I think two minutes would be plenty of time. All right, fellas, time to find the bad guys and oh, hey, there they are. Hey, uh, show, here's a tip. Instead of using your psi as a gun, why don't you just use a gun? Look, Steve's got the right idea. He's gone full Jesse Ventura from Predator. Hey, Raven! You guys! You dirty guys! Come back here! Whoa, watch it, fellas. If her hair catches on fire, it could kill us all. Okay, it looks like they defeated the villains, so why isn't the movie over yet? Gago! Gaga! Bakatare! Oh great, Blackie's just given up trying to say words now. And damn it, movie, are you trying to be G.I. Joe, James Bond, or Indiana Jones? Pick one. Oh look, they're finally attempting to rescue some of the hostages now. Imagine that. And what the hell are you doing? You're a ninja and he's an idiot. Ditch the disguise and just kill this guy. Actually, you know what? Why don't they rescue all the hostages right now? They know the villains are holding them in this cave, and they've got several men with them. Hell, the hostages could probably just rescue themselves. Look, this kid walks right past this guard without him even noticing. And where the hell did Raji go? They have a surprise guest. Someone has jointed us by way of the uh, rear entrance. Rear entrance? Man, even the movie's admitting it's pulling shit out of its ass now. Well, at least Albie seems happy to see him. Oh, Mohammed, you hunk! <laughs> My hunk cowboy! <laughs> Rossi, you hunk! Rossi! 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 What the hell is happening? Too many drugs this time, boys. Too many drugs. Yeah, I'll say. Look, I appreciate that you're finally starting your final assault on the villains, but did we really need the little kid to have his own fight scene? <laughs> Okay, so now it's like a Three Ninjas movie. Except here, I think every day on set was high noon at Mega Mountain. Anyway, while Sho's busy battling the box cover models for Shinobi, the villains decide to plant a bomb to blow up the cave, because I think even they aren't sure what their plan is anymore. Things take a turn for the worse when Steve gets wounded. No, I hate needles, no. Hurt. I don't believe for a second that anyone involved with this movie hates needles. Wow, what a shock. Steve and Jennifer aren't able to do any fighting. Looks like it's time for the final showdown between Spike and this random ninja that's indistinguishable from all the other ninjas in the movie. What, that's it? Ah, oh, come on, movie. That's not how you kill a ninja. This is how you kill a ninja. <laughs> In fact, a lot of deaths in this movie are kind of disappointing. Just look at the way Spike takes out Raji. Whatever, Red Brown did it way better. Okay, to be fair, this is the first death on this show where somebody literally gets their ass blown out. Okay, so Spike disarms the bomb and rescues the hostages. I'm assuming, since it just cuts away after he kills Raji. And so the day is saved and... Oh, what? You mean these two are still around? Just die already, will ya? Oh, no. no, no, putting them in a net isn't enough. Someone like Albie deserves a death as over the top as his performance. Okay, I like where this is going. Huh? Mein Führer, I can't walk! Spike's disappointed. He really wanted to shove a grenade up his ass. So with all the villains defeated, Steve gets with Jennifer and Spike... Uh, you know what? Better just get to the end credits. 
I think the best way to describe this movie is that it's like an action movie version of Slaughter High in that I'm not quite sure if it's making fun of dumb 80s action movies or if it really is just a dumb 80s action movie. There's times where it seems like it wants to have it both ways. Either way, this is the action movie for people who thought Commando was too realistic and subdued. But whether it's being serious or not, we can be thankful that Nine Deaths of the Ninja exists because if it didn't, we wouldn't have this. So take me Well, that's all for now. Until next time. What kind of junk they got you hooked on, huh? What do you think? The good stuff.